Mario Otilio, who is a, a global health policy analyst, and he joins us now live from Geneva. Great to have you on the show, Mario. Um, as that global battle uh, for HIV against HIV enters its fifth decade, remind us just how successful that battle has been. Yes, good morning. Um, we have uh, definitely come a long way on, on HIV, and uh, and uh, there were a lot of factors, of course, that contributed to that. But um, as you mentioned as well, the uh, antiretroviral um, so treatments really led to dramatic improvements in, in patients with advanced disease, but also the, you know to prevent some of the disease progression in, in those without uh, obvious manifestation. There were other things. There were integrations of, um, of services uh, for HIV with maternal and child health. Um, there was pre-exposure prophylaxis for at-risk but uninfected people. Um, there was a lot of improvement in data collection. So we've really come a long way. And uh, compared to the peak in 1998, um, infections have decreased, for instance, 47%. Um, but uh, yes, the progress is a little bit off track. Um, you mentioned the, the statistic that more than 600,000 people died last year of AIDS. We still have approximately 40 million people living with the disease, 10 of them remain untreated. Okay, and uh, just, uh, to, sorry to interrupt, Mario, um, just uh, remind us then how close are we then from undoing all the great work that has been done on HIV AIDS right now because of COVID? Yeah, COVID is is really putting those are living with HIV at a higher risk of um, of serious disease of death. So, first of all, there is an issue overall if somebody contract uh, somebody with HIV has COVID. Uh, of course, the you know the, the chance of serious disease increase. If somebody is not on treatment, uh, of course the uh, the chances of of dying it's is doubling. And you know there is there is a combination of, of issues, right? Like this report you mentioned was saying, uh, we have seen that people cannot access their HIV medicine, obtain uh, specialized care at clinics, they cannot get peer support. Uh, there, there is additional costs, right, that are that, that are coming uh, for for people that is actually moving them uh, far from the, the treatment. These are all burdens that have a long-term and a life trading consequences uh, on, on, on people living with HIV. So definitely that is, uh, that is a big burden. And where is the biggest worry right now? Because uh, are we just talking about Africa or is this also the rest of the world? Because of course HIV AIDS was and is everywhere. Yes, so this is of course a global pandemic, but Sub-Saharan Africa is home roughly to two-thirds of people living with HIV. Uh, but then in, in, in this region, less than 5% is fully vaccinated against COVID. So there is a, there is a, a lot of vulnerability. There is a, a, a larger con concentration of immunocompromised people there. Uh, and and I mean, we have to say that they, they are currently being ignored. So, um, as we have seen with the with some of the hypotheses around Omicron, this can be also breeding ground for new variants. But you know, aside from that, there is a big inequality issue there that needs to be addressed. Um, and, and definitely, uh, you know, when we look into how vaccination is reaching Africa, well, it's kind of reaching Africa maybe. Uh, in a faster way compared to when a a AIDS treatments, HIV treatments were reaching, you know, Africa at that time. But the current rates are absolutely not, uh, you know, um, uh, good for progress. I mean, we are going to see the same level of vaccination that we have in, in you know, in the Western world, like in a day, you know, in 10 years time. And so there is a need there to speed up, to kind of avoid actually that we are reverting back all the progress that we have done on HIV. And, and the, it is progress because so much was done. It, it was a successful uh, battle, you know, five decades. Surely there are so many lessons that have been learned uh, that can be applied to, to the rollout of vaccines and to really getting COVID down in, in Africa. Uh, absolutely. Um, I mean, I, I will say that the biggest lessons is that, you know, with, with HIV, we could not get it under control until we got actually antiretrovirals to everyone. Uh, it took a lot of time uh, from, you know, from when the first antiretrovirals came to market, that, you know, until they reached Africa. That was a lesson because we have seen in that lag like an incredible, incredible spike in cases. Now, it's clear that for COVID, 
uh, you know, we will not control the disease until we manage to get effective vaccines, now therapeutics in the hands of everyone. So that's kind of a lesson. These are global issues. They need a global response. You know, if you don't address every every everyone in the world, you, you will not win this. You will not win HIV, you will not win TB or COVID. Yeah, Mario, just before I let you go, a very quick question. Um, we're pressed for time, but was there hesitancy towards anti antiretrovirals at the time? There was a, a great, uh, well, there were some skepticism, uh, you know, as as is kind of physiological with new, with new science. But uh, the, the biggest, biggest issues was really like the ability to access those uh, those treatments that were available. Okay. And and the, and the time it took for those regions to, to get hold of them. All right, so access. Mario Ottilio, we've run out of time. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure to have you on the programme. Global Health Policy Analyst, live from Geneva. Appreciate it. Thanks.